Hi everyone, today I'm going to be unboxing a Huion tablet. I want to give a huge thank you to Huion for sending me this tablet to review, and without further ado, let's just get into it. I have been using the same Intuos 3 Wacom tablet for the past 8 years, so I was pretty excited at the opportunity to get a new tablet. On top of that, it's a tablet with a screen which I was so close to upgrading before I got into watercolor. Today I am going to be opening the Canvas GT191 model, and I have to say, spoilers, it's pretty dang good. Aw, oh, look at that, Huey on thanking me. No, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get this puppy out of the box. Before getting into the main tablet, there is a little box of goodies with a bunch of stuff you're going to need. Right away, I noticed that they had included a free gift, which is one of those dorky looking tablet gloves, which I will be wearing in the entirety of this review for the laughs, of course. Oh yes, it looks beautiful. I'm ready to draw. Also included is a cleaning cloth so that when your screen gets all dirty, you can wash it very soft. They also include the USB cable to connect your tablet, pin charging cable for your pin, power adapter for your tablet, the power cable so that you can plug it into the wall, and the pin holder which I find to be so nifty. I don't think I would have known about this little pin nib secret unless I had seen previous reviews. They do mention it in the paperwork, but I think it's so cool that if you just open the bottom of the pin holder, there are eight nib replacements. That's so cool. It's like a sci-fi movie. I thought it was pretty cute that they actually give you a screwdriver so that you can screw the screws into the stand. So nice of them. Okay, enough about the small details. What about we get into the actual opening of the tablet? Opening this up, of course, we have some more goods to get through. The first thing we see here are two pins, one that they gave me for free, thank you so much, as an extra. Their tablet pins are very sleek, I think they look very nice, especially compared to my Wacom tablet which looks so clunky and weird. I think the Huion tablet pin is very, very nice looking. It's also very slender and light to hold, I like that. Back in the box we have of course the HDMI cable to hook your tablet up and a DVI cable which I didn't need and last we have the stand for your tablet. And last but not least, our tablet. Let's get it out of the sleeve and start using it. Ooh, just look at it. It's a lot heavier than I expected it to be but it's so pretty and so nice. I can't wait to start using it. So let's hook it up, shall we? First things first, we have to install the stand to the back which was very easy using the screwdriver and screws that they supplied. Next, I went ahead and charged the pin because I figured it would be best to have it charging as I set it up rather than wait until I'm done and have a dead pin. The one thing I did notice about the pin charger was that it was very easy to come unplugged, but other than that it charged and was used very easily. After everything was plugged up and ready to go, it was time to install the drivers for this tablet. Now, the main thing I hear about these reviews is that the drivers are kind of wonky and a lot of people have trouble installing them and getting their tablets to work. I was worried about this going in, but to be honest, I had no problems at all. I think as long as you follow the directions and uninstall your previous tablet drivers, it should be okay. After I had the tablet installed and ready to go, I noticed one thing, and that was that the colors were pretty off. When you have a drawing tablet like this on a separate display, you do want to make sure that your colors match each screen that you use, and the first thing that I noticed with this display is that it was quite on the cool side. Things were looking very blue, but it was really easy to adjust by going into the menu by using the buttons on the bottom of the screen. Thankfully, it was an easy fix. Once everything was looking good, I was feeling anxious to finally try this out. So I started off by just making some lines to see how smooth it was. And I have to say, I am pretty impressed with the difference of having a screen tablet makes. Everything was so smooth and I really felt a lot more confident with making my lines by having it on a screen. It was very interesting. The one thing I did notice was that as I used my pin on the screen, it was very squeaky and it felt very rough and scratchy at first. I wasn't sure if this is something that would wear away as the nib got adjusted to being used, so I did end up switching the nib out. It didn't make a difference, but as I continued to work, I noticed that this squeaking did stop. Do you hear that? What is that? 
It scared me at first because I thought it was scratching up the screen, but thankfully it didn't do any damage to the tablet itself and it ended up going away like I said over time, so I think the nib just needed to be worn in a little bit. Something else I noticed was that the calibration of the pin was getting a little funny on the edge of the screen. After I calibrated it, it would be pretty perfect, but over time as I used it, it would get just a little bit off. Nothing to where it really messed up being able to touch anything, but it was just something that I noticed. Overall, I think I am very impressed with this tablet. At first, I had a lot of problems getting started, but to be honest, I think those were mostly user error issues. After the initial hump of getting used to using it and figuring out how to get through all the quirks of this cheaper alternative, I think this is very worth it. The price of this tablet is 500 US dollars, and if you were to look at a Wacom Cintiq, you are looking at maybe three to four times the price range of this tablet, and I think it does quite well. There are a couple of things that I was not too keen on though. The first is that there were no keys on the side. I know some of the models do have hotkeys and I probably would prefer them, but I think I may do. I programmed the pin to have a control Z and to be honest, that's about all I needed. It was weird getting used to not having to use control Z or not having hotkeys. And I think I actually found it faster to use the buttons on the pin than actually using hotkey buttons. So if that's something that you're concerned about, it actually might be something that you could get used to. The pin holder was also pretty cute. Not only could you put it in a vertical position, but you could also put it horizontally. Isn't that nice? Also, this particular model doesn't come with a pin that has an eraser at the other end, but honestly, that's never something that I even use on my other tablets, so it's not even a concern of mine. Speaking of concerns, I wasn't sure how to feel about having a chargeable pin, but to be honest, I used it for so many hours and it never lost charge. I will say I don't like having extra wires to keep track of, but I suppose that's just one of those minor inconveniences that I can get over. First world problems and all. Another thing I noticed while filming was that it's a very sturdy tablet. I dropped my phone on it while recording and it didn't do any damage to it at all. I was in quite a shock because classic me dropping things on a new expensive piece of equipment, but I was very surprised to see that there was nothing, no mark, no scuff. It was in perfect condition after dropping my phone on it and I gotta say, quite impressed with that. Overall, I have to say I am very impressed with this tablet. Not only does it look very good, but after you get over a few bumps at the beginning, it performs quite well. I had no problems with it after I got it set up and got used to it. This is something you definitely need if you are streaming and you like to do art online. You don't have to worry about having to do things on your screen while also drawing. You can do them on your other screen. I only have one display, so having a tablet that I can draw on, then turn over to my computer and do things like mess with the music or chat with the chat, it's very nice to have this art only display on the side and I gotta say, I always thought having a screen display wasn't something that I would really need with my art, but something at this price might be good to look into if you are also just kind of considering it. With all of that being said, I think the minor inconveniences are actually worth a cheaper tablet after all. I sat down for a whole day the other day using this tablet and I animated several ant animations. I actually forgot about all of the problems that I had at the beginning of setting up the tablet and I was quite impressed looking at my day's work to see that I had no problems at all. And speaking of ant animations, did you notice? After animating that first ant walk, I got bit by the animation bug and I hit a few ants throughout this video. Let me know in the comments if you found them. Here are the ants you can find. This idea was inspired by Sultan Sketches, who I will link in the description. They also hid some of my ants in their previous videos, and we have now come full circle. Again, thank you Helion for sending me this tablet to review. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much to all of my patrons, including Eve Milady, Michael Young, Sarah James, Josh Perry Buck, Alice Tries, Nerdy Curls, Rochelle Renee, Hannah, Bellasaurus, and Acrylia. If you want a shout out at the end of my videos, access my sketchbook, coloring pages, and more, become my patron by clicking the link in the description. Thank you all so much for the support. Bye.